people are so delusional in thinking that the true season 3 isekai that's gonna save this year, this season of anime is ReZero. No. No. ReZero? Mid-Zero. Who the hell watches that garbage? I hear there's an idiot that made 250 videos plus of ReZero content in two months. What a shameless milker. Arifura. This is the shit. All the cultured people know that I put it to cool here. Season 3, we've been prepping for it, right? Uh, my knowledge of Season 1 and 2 is pretty shaky. It's been a while, but I have done thorough cut content analysis, blah, blah, blah. I should be able to pick up on the very big points. Basically, at the end, what happened, right? Um, uh, our... What's her name? The priest girl, her body is kind of no longer there. Her soul is now some kind of like transferred into, you know, um, the Valkyrie girl from the church side, right? Yeah, that anoint, right? Exactly. That's what did happen. Um, we're going away. The world is expanding beyond just like this kingdom that we're part of. I thought that was pretty much it. There's an empire. So it's like, oh shit, the empire exists. The empire also has, you know, a previous drama with the bunny clan. And I think the trailers are setting us up to have like almost like a war against the empire, right? Justice for the bunnies. If that's what this arc is going to be about, like we're going to be fucking eating it up. Let's begin today's reaction. Wow. We back, man. That's right, we got her fucking SUV. Recap! That's right, so... I actually got confused with this guy and his... Minion. Basically, this is the dude that we saw in the Volcano Dungeon, but... The person that actually attacked on his behalf is someone completely different that we basically just destroyed at the end of Season 2, right? Or did he get away? It was that demon guy versus Yue, I think, right? There's a whole dragon mode shit happening. He got away, right? But that person is not this guy, right? And I, I, I forget the demon hierarchy, but these are pretty important people. <laughs> Oh yeah, this was very... This part of the story was actually pretty entertaining for me. Usually I hate fucking Labyrinth. I, I, I genuinely hate the Labyrinths whenever we go in to fight random CGI monsters that imposes no threat just to get the secrets of the magic stuff right at the bottom of the floor. I hate that shit. But this one was so fun to me because like Kaori was giving a reality check. Hajime was like, bitch, you gonna cry? You gonna cry and just sit there and like, oh man, that shit was so good. <laughs> the talking fish! He clutched for us multiple times! We saw him, we freed, and then he showed up! Dude, this guy's Chad. Look at that locked in fish. That's right, and then we dropped me off. We ain't coming back. Alright. That's right, and there's a traitor amongst us. Oh! It was the same red haired guy. Right? So, this is my misunderstanding. I constantly get um, this. Two important demon dudes important, but this is the same person, right? But there's also another person that we see in these like cliche like POV for like the Demon Lord Castle part where there's someone important talking and I thought that guy was this guy. It's getting all mixed up, but separate people and I think he's of a lower ranking, right? The other one is the one whose wife got killed by Hajime. Exactly! Yes, that's the one. That different guy was killed by Shia and he's done! Was he higher ranking or not? I guess he's just done. That guy's done. So the important guy is the red hair demon. This guy is that one that matters. He actually survived and run, ran away or flew away. Noint. Classic. What did... How did the teacher help? What did Aiko-sensei do? Was there something specific about her magic that aided Tio to use this crazy magic? Or was it just side by side? I feel like... It was just... She, she was like buffing kind of, right? Was there any topic about like methane happening? Tio Mana? She was, I, I remember teacher kind of being important, not just like teacher role and supervising and being like the pillar of support for the kids, but also like she did like magically Im imbue, enhanced her breath, mixed meth, yeah, methanol. That's what I'm thinking. I, I remember methanol, cow farts. Boom. <laughs> 
初めの力に驚愕していた相当弱した時にはあの魔人族の男は Yeah, basically I remember like this is our like most OP like satellite tier fucking weapon but then Hajime also has like those uh autopilot shield looking things I forget what they're called but they're like flower petal kind of looking and they're always orbiting around the active shield the attack that it's really powerful too those things kind of got really glossed over in the anime of like how we got it yeah, the crossfit the crossfit is so important in season two that's right and the traitor got away bro i will still there bro go back to watch the season two i remember during your reaction i still remember now it's been like almost a year this bitch was on the ground and suddenly she just appeared out of nowhere by his side. I thought like she couldn't get away and she got away. And I'm like, oh my fucking God. And she's a necromancer on top of that too. That's so dangerous ability. What was her motivation? She was basically a femme cell, right? She hated how all the other girls got the attention of dudes. I think she had a crush on Koki, yeah. <laughs> That's pretty much it. Just dumb bitch. No! How did he die again? Dude, this guy is so unimportant that we didn't even give him a recap of how he died. I think he died in the most pathetic way possible, right? Hajime didn't even think he was like worthy of finishing off himself. I remember him like holding him up or something and kind of throwing him off, tossing him to the side. Yeah, we we taught we basically just ejected him. And then the demons like trampled or just got eaten by the monsters, right? Yeah. That was I I think that's a very suiting fitting death. I, something about me wanted something personal just to deliver a point to this piece of shit. Because he he is the one that also just like fucked up Hajime from the beginning of season one too, but being such an non important person where Hajime is like, you're not even worthy for me to finish you off, I think that's that's pretty significant. <laughs> No, enough, enough labyrinths. It's a cool ship we have. Dude, we got a fucking ship, just an entire ship. Season one, season two recap, kind of. How do you assemble? Are they the bunnies? Dude, our party is huge now. Lily is doing what? Meet the Emperor while we go to the bunnies. Eh? I mean, that's pretty much what we're gonna do, right? We're going to the Empire later. Why? Military dictatorship? Nothing like isekai and slaves. I mean, I'm already so used to such shitty people back, you know, at our old place. Like, how shitty could the Empire really be? Probably really bad. Who was this girl again? Was she the one that was using some crazy like barrier and shield magic? I remember there was a girl that was so brave, that was tiny, that was really clutching with like shield stuff. Was that her? That's her, right? Abandoned by God. Beastmen who have no magic. That's interesting because beast people... So to the Empire, if you're a beast man without magic, you're evil. Abandoned by God. But... Wasn't that the same reason kind of why Shea was low-key kicked out? Or why she was perceived to be different? Because Shea had like future sight, right? Interesting. It's not your fault, don't worry. She's angered the system. Backstory time? Oh, oh. Look at her bunny ears, they're all folded downward. We know it's pretty fucked up, but how bad is it? Wonder if this, guy, this guy's face, let's remember him. He's got two cross guards, let's remember this guy. Maybe he still exists, he probably definitely exists. No. 
うむ魔力を持ったアジンシーヌじゃよアジン族を奴隷として連れ去る帝国もねシアさん帝国見つけるのは難しい I have a feeling that Lily will just get taken hostage for some reason I don't know I, I, I don't think the Empire is going to treat Lily right I feel like they're going to be super creepy and like we're going to have to save her okay. What is it? Nagumo! I honestly am on board. I usually hate whatever he says, but because I hate the labyrinth so much, please, please, let's just go to the Empire, please. Okay, so. <sighs> That's kind of cold. He might be right, though. You shouldn't. Like, like, I remember that one lesson from Isekai Shikaku. Remember Isekai Shikaku? That one episode about the bar and the tree, about the, you know, who the really good people and the bad people are, right? Good and bad, black and white, it's it, one thing, it's not absolute. It's not absolute. You never know exactly what kind of system is holding up. A, in fact, if you went in there and, like, dismantled the system, quite often what happens is the outcome of what happens after is even worse. You know, you can't just go in and displace a country, changing fundamentally their structures, and then... Even worse things happen, you know what I mean? But like, we should probably still help regardless. <laughs> Koki so self-righteous. That armor is honestly embarrassing at this point <laughs> because of how shiny and gold he is. I kind of feel bad. Not, I, Koki honestly isn't even that bad compared to a lot of the other... Like, like what is he, right? In an isekai, you have like... The self-righteous white knight, you know, that's always got these ideals, but they're not really capable, and all they do is talk shit. Koki, honestly, it, it, he's got a good heart. I, I, Koki Shun, you know, same thing from Kumodeska. It, they're idiots, but they got a, they got good intentions. Also, Shizuku is the best girl of this show. Shizuku is my best girl of this show. Shizuka or Shizuku, actually. Koki. Shit, I think it's Shizuku. Shizuka is from Hundred Girlfriends. Yeah. He's not giving up on them. Yeah. Because now is not the right time. Right? This is the naivety with the idealism. It's not like we're giving up, bro. In fact, doing some other shit and then saving might be the better answer. You can't just rush in there. Probably right. Yeah, the classic, it's not A because of B, but B because of A. He grinded for that shit. That's right, he got backstabbed, bro. Protect himself and just chill and go home. Shizuku is so level-headed. Wait, are we going to the Empire? Wait, did we change our mind? What happened? Someone. Bunny clan. No, oh, the opening to two bunny girls. Bro, in broad daylight? I agree. We should sign Koki. He's right. He's right about this, but I still want to see him humiliated somehow. But okay, you, you go try to do it. And he gets fucked up, and then I show up, and then we save him. <laughs> That's basically the story of Arifrita so far, right? Koki's like got these ideal ways to do these things, but he could never do it himself, gets in trouble, Hajime then shows up. Season 1, Season 2 finale, every single time! Hmm? Huh? What are they doing? Is it according to their plans? <laughs> I don't remember them, I'm sorry, but I see massive potentials in their assets. <laughs> Lana and Mina. Yeah. Who? Who? Wait, wait, wait. Is Lana and Mina actually from season one? Or, or, or are they retconning this shit in? Like, Liliana? I don't remember her in season one, bro. In season two, they just showed up out of fucking nowhere. So they were in the village before? All right. All right. I, 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 I. Part of me kind of wishes that they're retconning them in because it's kind of funny. <sighs> Grow up? Did they hit puberty? Amanogawa. Is Koki his first name or his last name? Never seen anyone refer to Koki as Amanogawa before. Maybe? 
Oh, the head's gone. Okay, that was the plan. They're good. They're good. Right. And if we went there and try to save them, could have been ruined. Another instance where, at a first glance, it may seem so simple. Good and evil. We got to save them. But actually, turns out they're perfectly fine and we could have fucked everything up. No. Bald. No, no, no. Bald. <laughs> These girls, please call the ambulance. But not for me. Headshot. Animation going crazy. <laughs> Yo, I think the Empire needs help. Koki, you need to. Koki needs to now go save them. Hajime, don't you think this is fucked up? The bunny people are killing these innocent Empire citizens. We need to go save them. Bro, that little. I love it. Look at the detail here. Look at the detail of like the bald guy's head as he steps on it and it becomes compressed. This shit's so good. And the cameraman, bro, look, look, look. The cameraman focusing on the right parts here. <laughs> Boom. Immediately goes to the cleavage first later on, too, right? It's just like they, they got the priorities straight. <laughs> They're a strong clan. I wonder how much they've all changed. Have they continued to train after we left? No, 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 straight up. Their personalities changed. They're no longer cute, innocent bunnies that can't protect themselves. They've become like Spartans. What? What? <laughs> yeah, maybe the training was a bit fucked up, but they can protect themselves now, right? You should be thanking me. Why are you booing me? My god, look at those abs. Holy. Dude, look at the muscles in this bunny girl. Look at the tra You see the traps here? Holy shit, they're jacked. Yo. The animation is actually good. <laughs> That's a cute face. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the cute face that she's like, come on. You like this shit? Fuck you. I spit in your own grave. <laughs> Double tap. That's a bit excessive, but nice. My god, those two bunny girls. Dude, their abs are crazy. They just know. They just know. We haven't even been in contact with them. They just fucking know, bro. Yes, sir! Who else could it be, right? Yo, what was the name of the sniper? The most recent sniper that I remember is Hekate 2 from, you know, SAO. GGO, right? For Shinon. This gun had a name too. I forget all the different gun names. Does anybody know right now? The Shrine? Is it just that? There's, also, there's this, and there's the, um... He has his pistol, right? He has this. He also has this. The thing that he penetrated Teal with, which is like, if you have prep time, that shit can just like do so much damage, right? And then there's, and that was like the ultimate skill until we realized that like, we have like a satellite beam cannon as well, right? No, <laughs> <laughs> you think it's Chuni? No, no, no. This is not Chuni B, okay? Hajime this did not wear an eye patch to stand out. Okay? It actually has a function, okay? <laughs> edgelord. That's actually nice. Crunchyroll subs, bro. Actually, who are you calling an edgelord? That's the perfect fucking war for Chuni. <laughs> He actually shot at them. He shot at her ass. Damn, look at that shit. Like, barely any CGI too. Am I crazy? Or is this like acceptable, right? Look at this shit. Like, it does not look like a separate fucking cut pasted object in the sky. Everything looks really like, it makes sense. The immersion is there. It's not a whiplash of, oh, what the fuck is that thing in the sky? Oh, 
Pretty much. I mean, an alien is technically, and I didn't even know the term alien meant this until the whole fucking Trump shit happened, and you know all these fucking Ill illegal immigrants called illegal aliens. But if you're not from like, if you're not a local. You Basically, an alien. You guys are isekai characters. You are literally aliens. Except her. Tio's a dragonborn. Tio's different. Boss. The bunny man, far right back, is showing more ass than these girls. I want you to notice this right now. Bro's wearing a fucking loincloth. Front and back. Look at that cheek, look at that ass sticking out, bro. Holy shit. Dude, the abs are crazy, man. Oh, please. No bad news, please. Bad news incoming? Bartufirdo! Almost Bartufarto, like Leon from Mobseka. No longer par. I'm an executioner, sister. Okay. Alright, you're the executioner. I mean, I, he's straight up putting bolts in people's domes, man. You saw those arrows go through. Bartufirdo! Yeah, that's right. No longer Lana. Peak. Peak got put at the comedy. Peak slice of life. This shit reminds me of Konosuba when we visit the Crimson Demons. You know how the Crimson Demons all are so chuny and they have their stupid names and poses? This is basically that. She did a JoJo pose. This is straight up a JoJo pose though, right? No, no, no. I know I I don't know the characters because I haven't seen JoJo's. I've only seen I my JoJo knowledge is through like memes and clips, but I know this pose. I know that one. Skybreaker. Ooh. Okay. Hello, Phantom and Silent Blade. They ain't even trying to hide it. <laughs> when, when it comes to the bunny club, they, 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 Shea is just getting whored out as usual. Red Rondo of Death or White Fang Hurricane. RRD kind of goes hard. White Fang Hurricane? Yeah, maybe. But Red Rondo of Death. You know, it's like death. You're like dying. That sounds more sick to me. Ten oh, it's for him. It's for Hachime. You're wasting your time. It's Hachime the Edgelord. Yeah, I think that Hajime suits White Fang Hurricane more. Like his hairstyle, like aesthetically, when I think of like White Fang Hurricane, maybe it suits him more. Red Rondo of Death though. All the blood. Shit, and he has blood, you know, red, you know, on his clothing too. Both names are pretty cool. No, I don't want a name. I think Hajime the Edge Lord is funnier. Maybe. Bro, it's not just the first name. They they speak out their entire titles, man. Neash Turatrum of the external murderer, right? It's it's uh, their whole epithet is part of their fucking name. How about something in between then? How about something in between? The dual wielding white fang of crimson death. Yeah, that's that's too wordy though. They're super fans. Hachi made the edge lord. Edge lording is contagious. I think that Ari Furetsa is at its best when there's slice of life dumb moments like this. That plus like the whenever we get the revenge or something popping off. Like these moments to me are way more fun than like hunting CGI monsters in the labyrinth. 
クールなお前には後で強制ツインテールリボン付きをプレゼントアプスルシネマ We have an excuse for Shizuku to be in a twin tails with the ribbon later. Oh my god, thank you. How do you do that? Five centimeters? How? You're gonna make her bald? Is, is the hair a t r u e to five centimeters? You, you, you're gonna literally cut her body five centimeters? What are you doing? Yes, sir! Mr. Hajime the Edgelord! <laughs> that, that laugh. <laughs> Tell me that's not a Chunibyo evil demon lord laugh, bro. That's, that's a Chuni laugh. <laughs> Alright, rest of Bunny Clan. So, what is it? 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 And, he, and everyone has to sit there and be like, really? We, we, we really, the discussion's not gonna happen until Hajime acknowledges him as, as Bartofer. Look at them all just standing so seriously. Bartofer, talk. Wait, 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 what? It's not the Empire's fault, but something else. Not the Empire, but the demons brought the monsters. ボービーを整えるためにとハウリア族帝国兵が現れたのはその時でしたしかも奴らの目的は進行で Oh, they fucking knew, right? Empire probably knew of the threats the demon forces let the bunny clan face them off as we get weakened and we're tired then the Empire shows up at the opportune moment to kidnap for slave trade that's definitely what's going on, right? 帝国兵を尋問したところどうやら帝国でも協力かつのもの。ナイス、ファクム。Let's go demons。消費した労働力を補充する。But that's what creates the incentive. So now the empire is fucked up. They need labor. They need people to just lay brick. That's what the bunny clan are for to the empire. が動いているってことは、大して労働力にならないはずの都人族。No, she has dad。労働力とか言ってるが、ゲスな欲望が透けて見える。Not just for labor, what are they doing?、Mm? Alright, we gotta go save them. That's the reason to go there right now. Oh, that little. You see that? You see that from Hajime? Hey! I hate it when her bunny ears are flopping down because she's sad! Oh! You know what to do, right? Butter. No, butter to better. <laughs> that pot, that pot, that pot, butter. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Butter to better. Yes, sir. Yes, boss. Butter. Nothing, nothing, nothing. And then. Butter to better. Yes, sir. Yes. Take a quick look. Let's go. Yes, sir. <laughs> Koki's probably like, what the fuck? When I ask you, you don't care. These bunnies ask you, now we're going. This is my idea. Why are you looking like the champion here? <laughs> nah, we can't do that. <laughs> you don't know that. <laughs> Damn, she is such a nice girl. She's willing to put priority in the labyrinth rather than saving her family. She's too nice. Hmm? <laughs> oh, okay. I thought she. What do you think she? What, what do you think she's he's touching here? What? When you when you move the ears, I thought that he was touching her ears for a second. When your bunny ears are droop. Wait, wait, no, it's the bunny ears are over here. I but I was talking about those bunny ears. What is he? What's there? I want her to move her ears. Maybe I don't. Maybe I don't want to see that. Some things are best not known. You know. Like, does she have e? It'd be weird if she had ears. It'd be even weirder if she didn't have ears. Y you know, I, I, I don't know. Murishte, what up the nante cows tend there? Simpai not a simpai that the yeba yeo. Nanu, you must are in your nante stirunda. It's mumita, you motta go to yeba it tunda. Nigi, Omega, what up the night or no? 
Makes me sad. Us, not just I. Yo, Yui's gonna get mad if you keep holding up to her face like that. We all care. Oh! In front of everybody? Wow! At your command. Let's go save. Oh, there it is. That's all we need to hear. Let's go. Let's go destroy the empire now. Yeah, Yue was not jealous. Yue is fine. Yue and Shia, they're good, but you know, Kaori, anoint body. I'm sorry, girl. Even if you change bodies. I don't think Hajime will ever see you like that. I, this guy just, and I want like Hajime to like give preferential treatment to Shizuku more than Kaori because they're close. I'm fucked up like that. I truly am. I'm just trying to think of the scenarios how they can make Kaori even more jealous and suffer. The something Empire. <gasps> Bunnies, no. Is that Cam, father? <laughs> Or being used for labor. Oh. The ears perked up there. <laughs> What's happening? Wait. What? Whoa, 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 whoa. Are, is he? I, I, is, is he trapped in here? Or are they trapped in here with him? Did, did this face, the ears perking up. And then this maniacal face. Makes this feel like everything is all according to plan. I'm not sure. That is... Today's episode of Ari Furata. I know I'm a day late. It's gonna be on YouTube a little bit later. Blame Canadian Thanksgivings. It is what it is. But hey, we're back and stronger than ever. The animation looks amazing. The CGI is well adapted into the actual 2D scenes where it doesn't feel like a whiplash whenever I see a giant object in the sky. What's happening right now? It was also a nice recap, right? Obviously, my chat's bailing me out, giving me more details and answers about the things that I've forgotten. But we're back, and we were gonna go to the Great Labyrinth. There's like two more, I think. But before we do that, no, we're gonna make a detour. And in fact, I love this detour. The Bunny Clan and the Empire, they've always been at odds against each other. And right now, because the demons have attacked, not only us, but the Empire. The Empire is honestly kind of scuffed, right? They have no labor. They've lost a lot of forces and infrastructure. They need more bodies to kind of like work labor. And that's where the Bunny Clan comes into play. It's looking like Shea's dad is captured. Cam, right? But based on the look at the end, I don't think he's captured. I think that he wants to be in here. Maybe this is all part of a grander plan to bring the Empire down from within. But oh man, this arc is probably going to be so fucking peak. And that's it for me. If you're still here and if you enjoyed this reaction though, please like the video. Check out the other playlist for even more content. And until next time, take care.